to myself and with the, the folks that have tuned in with us today, um, you, know, you know, it's been a pleasure for me to have been with you for the last two days as we attempt to disseminate and to connect to certain end time realities that we must face. And you know, uh, Professor, there is something that is very unique that is happening with the radio programs at 98.1, because there's a lot of folks from other religious denominations, you know, specifically folks that are Hindus and Muslims have been latching on to the eschatological apocalyptical teachings that the Lord has allowed me to do in the book of Revelation. Because let me tell you, when the judgment falls, it's gonna fall upon everyone irrespective of your race, your tongue, your color, your pedigree, you know, irrespective of your religious persuasion, when judgment comes, it's gonna hit us all. So this evening, we started with the New World Order and ministered on the beast last night, who is both a person and an empire, the beast, the antichrist. And tonight we're gonna to share a bit on the, the mystery church of Babylon. That false apostate church that was is totally emblematic of true Christianity, but it is in itself a devouring monster. That is the church that we're going to discuss tonight, the mystery church of Babylon, the apostate church that is going to be here when the Antichrist comes. And we have already seen there is a rapid escalation that is taking place of putting a one world religion in place. Now, it has been a thought for many centuries. It began with a guy by the name of Nimrod in the Bible, in the book of, you hear what I'm saying? The mystery church of Babylon. It began in the days of Nimrod. You see, what he was trying to do was to create something that would overthrow the preeminence, the sovereignty, and the mastery of the true church and the true God. He attempted to create something, a counterfeit, that resembled Christianity, that was not Christianity. It was the very sad thing that, 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 that Roman Constant, you know, Constantine attempted to create with Catholicism when he saw Christianity becoming a prevalent force. So he designed something that resembled Christianity, but in essence, it was really a biblical scriptural mockery of the unbridled, unadulterated, un, you know, unleavened truth. So we're gonna explore some of these things this evening. And now we would see in the conclusion of the book of Revelation, the 16th chapter, that one of the last judgment in fact, the trumpet has already is now being poured out. And this trumpet, my dear friends, what has, has it accomplished? You see, we are getting into the seventh judgment of God upon a world that had rejected him. Okay, the seventh judgment. And here now we would see that there is the destruction that has come upon the world. Now, there is coming a day, my dear friends, according to the book of Revelation, the 16th chapter, the destruction of the world would be thorough. From the sky, now this is here, here Revelation 16, 20. Every island fled and no mountain could be found. Think about this. Every island had disappeared by the tsunamis that are going to be coming in, the floods of God's furious judgment and every mountain was leveled. And this is how it was accomplished. Remember in the book of Exodus that one of the plagues that was sent by Moses against Egypt involved hail. Well, you know, the, the plagues that has been resent by God in the book of Revelation were all pictures and were all of the same imagery of the things that took place in the book of Exodus. So here now he sends, Hail. Uh, but the difference is that they were about 100 pounds each. Think about millions of that hail that is raining from heaven. 
huge hailstones that are descending upon men, leveling the mountains. Everything is going to disappear. But there is something that has been happening. While such massive destruction is released upon the earth, instead of men repenting, they were cursing God. You see that God cursing attitude that we have in the world today? It's only going to be compounded as God's judgment hits the world. The, the topographical nature of the world was dramatically changed. That was as a result of the earthquake, islands and, and mountains disappearing, the loss of life and, prop, and property, and huge waves and tsunamis from the oceans that would bring total destruction beyond description. Think about it, my dear friends. Now, God is preparing to bring us into a scenario. And God does not forget. You hear what I'm saying to you, my dear friends? One of the worst things you could do is to hurt a child of God. He says, touch not my anointed, do my children no harm. One of the worst things you could do, my dear friends, is to mess with God's children. Come on. And let's look at the book of the destruction now. He remembers. Okay? He has released seven seals. He has released seven trumpets on the world. Judgment. We have seen, I, I spoke a bit about the book of uh, Revelations, the 8 and 11. You know, there is an asteroid that's going to hit the earth. And it has already been determined, Professor, this asteroid is known as Wormwood. The NASA people detected it and they called it Apophis. You know what is the meaning of the word Apophis? Apophis means chaos. When they call that asteroid in the book of Revelations 8 and 11, Wormwood, it is an asteroid that is scheduled to hit the earth on April the 29th of the year 2029. And where it's going to hit, it is scheduled to fall somewhere around the Hollywood area. You see them Hollywood people with their canality, they are driving policy. They are some of the secret people that are working behind the corruption and the acceleration of the Antichrist culture and movement. You see those people that are with their wickedness and their wife swapping and their abject hate for God. I'm telling you, there is a judgment that's going to hit that place. That's going to be God's fury unleashed against that rebellion. So here God begins to speak about something that he has had in his mind for a long time. You see, he speaks now of the destruction of Babylon. There are different aspects to Babylon. There is a religious ecclesiastical Babylon. There is a political commercial Babylon. And there is an empire called Babylon. And let us examine these three different sections of Babylon. So here is an angel. The angel says unto John. And he introduces him to the judgment of this woman to come. And I'm going to read to you about that woman. And one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said unto me, Come, John, I would show you the punishment of this great prostitute who sits on many waters. With her kings of the earth, she has committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adultery. Now check this out. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a desert. And there I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names. And she had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet, glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand that was filled with the abominable things and the filth of her adultery. And on her forehead was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, 
the mother of prostitute and the abominations of the earth. Let us explore this woman. And who is this woman? She is typical of the apostate church to come. There are many characteristics of this woman, but when it says that I saw that she was drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of those who bore the testimony to Christ. She carried the blood of every martyr in her cup of filth. All of those valiant men and women who were beheaded, who were fed to lions under the Roman Catholic system, all of those that were destroyed in the Spanish Inquisition, which was basically a Catholic movement, the purging of the Jewish people. Come on, understand me. This was the blood that she carried in the cup. Hear what I'm saying? And she was in that golden cup were the atrocities of the ages that this woman had performed. Now, and here she is described as a prostitute. You see, when the rapture occurs, all true believers, now can I say it again? The true believers, not the make believers, nor the unbelievers. Now, let me just clarify what, it is, what this is. You see, a true believer is one who lives by 100% of the word. Every jot or a tittle is applicable to his spiritual life, his conduct, his walk, and his destiny. Now, an unbeliever is the guy who would live and he would believe 90% of the word. See, he doesn't want to pay his tithes. So he's going to eliminate that. When the Bible says, let not your son go down on your anger. Come on. What does that mean? If you get mad in the morning with a brother or sister, hey, you got to get it right by the end of the day. Don't let the son go down on your anger. If that one portion of scripture is followed, you know there is going to be no war and differences in the world. I tell you, first lady, if you get mad with Dr. Noel Richards, man, he might have done something that might have hurt your feelings or offended you, Sister Nicole. According to the Bible, you got to get it right before the sun goes down. Could you imagine that being applied to the church? I know ministers in Trinidad who have said to me, "I would rather die." than break bread with a brother or a sister who offended them. What an ugly betrayal of Christianity. You see, you know what spiritual maturity is? It's not how much Bible you know, how many doctors of divinity you got behind your name. What is spiritual maturity? That you could forgive as you are forgiven. Okay? So that is a guy now, he is an unbeliever. He believes what applies to him and his behavioral pattern. But then there is a third guy, there is a make-believer. Man, he's going to spend his entire life in church. He's around the altar crying and weeping and speaking in tongues and rolling and bucking and tripping and flipping. He does not miss a prayer meeting. But he's like Judas. He is there for betrayal. He goes through all of the rudimentaries and the calisthenics of Christianity. But he is a make-believer. So who is going to be taken up in the rapture? The true believer. The true believer, my dear friends, is going to be the one that is taken up in the rapture. Now, and this woman, you see this woman, what constitutes the church that she is going to be the leader of. It constitutes the apostate church. Okay? That church of apostasy, which would dominate politically and religiously what remains after the rapture. And that is going to be a church that is devoid of redemptive influences. That is the church professor. That is the church, my dear friends, that the world would work with as hand and glove. The political institutions would work with that church. And as I speak to you this evening, deals have already been signed with a lot of the major religions 
that they are going to come together to form a one world religion. And I've said this, I've said it before. President Clinton, and I hate calling the name of these presidents, and President Obama. You remember that guy, Rick Warren, who wrote that book, Purpose Driven? Well, he sat down and they attempted to create a religion called Chrysla. Come on, Chrysla. It's gonna be a combination of Christianity and Islam. If you read the Bible, my dear friends, you're gonna know that conflict with Islam would only be solved by God. You're gonna be no peace in the Middle East. Okay? There is no peace in the Middle East. There's gonna be a false peace, but after three and a half years, the Antichrist is gonna turn on Israel, is gonna absolutely destroy this woman, this mystery church of Babylon. No wonder why I've been crying out to the churches. You better get into a church that is really a Bible believing. Come on, understand me. Get into a church that stands up for the word of God. And I believe that this is a particular directive to our Catholic brethren. Because as you would see this evening, this woman represents the Catholic church. Who is going to embrace all of the other religions? And together, she would sit on the beast, riding along with the beast. I'd read it for you in a couple of minutes. And this is what John saw. He saw this woman on a scarlet colored beast. Uh, Professor, remember we had put up a logo for tonight's meeting? If you could yes. find it, you could just throw it up there so that people could connect with it. You know, remember the, 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 that woman? She sat upon a scarlet colored beast with seven heads and 10 horns. What are the seven heads? Seven kings, seven continents, seven kingdoms, seven empires that has already existed and to come. Okay, this is the woman. She is sitting on that beast. She is obviously in collusion with the political empire that has been described in the book of Revelations 13, 1 to 10. And the fact that she is seating on the beast indicates that she is working with the Antichrist. She is working, my dear friends, with the Antichrist. As I said, hand and glove. And look at this woman. What is she wearing? She's decked off with jewels. She's dressed with purple, gold, and white. What is the color of the mitre of the Pope? Yeah. What is the color of the mitre that the Pope wears? The woman wears the trappings of ceremonial purple and scarlet, which are prominent and which are enhanced with precious stones. Can I tell you something, my dear friends? In referring to the identification as a mystery, because its ultimate truth is learned as early as Genesis 11, continues through the book of Revelations until the destruction of this city in the book of Revelation, the 18th chapter. Now, Babylon is the title that covers every false claim to Christianity and every false religion. You see, Babylon has clearly crept into the church and much of what's going to take place in this church of the end time, the apostate church, would be Babylonian rites and religious practices in its totality. You see, when Babylon was introduced in the book of Genesis 11, her true character was revealed when she chose to build a tower. And the purpose of that tower was to exalt itself above God. I tell you what Nimrod thought. You see, he had lost his grandparents in the flood. So he was of the opinion that if he had built a tower that had gone higher than the flood, if God ever sends a flood again, his people would be saved. So in the process, his concepts and his religion would exceed the sovereignty of God. This was the purpose, my dear friends. So see, it should be borne in mind that the term Babylon applies to a, a religion, it also applies to a city, and it, it also applies to an empire. But let's check out this woman. 
You see, who is this woman? Who is she portray? I believe that she is a portrayal of Semiramis. Semiramis? You remember that lady? You remember Nim Nimrod? Well, it is Semiramis that founded Babylon. And according to the belief, she had a son. And his name was Tammuz. Okay? And let me tell you, this woman knew the scriptures. When Tammuz was born, now she knew the scriptures. Here this professor, the book of uh, Genesis 3 and 15. For the heel of the woman should bruise the head of the serpent. It was the first messianic promise. So here she is. She had a son. Okay. She had a son and his name was Tammuz. And it's reputed that he was born on December the 25th. And it was also established that he went into a forest on December the 25th, when the equinox and the solstice and the, the thin veil, the clouds was thinnest, that allowed demons to come down from the second heaven to the first without much difficulty. Thank you for that picture, Babylon the Great. You see the woman that sits upon the beast? with seven heads. I'll come to the seven heads in a minute. He went to the forest and he met his father who had died. Now his father was dead, but he claimed that he met his father at a certain tree, which is a, a, a replacement of the cross again. Here is he, the son. He's a type of Christ. Okay, the mother and the child cult was established. But this woman, was so beautiful, my dear friends, like a Jezebel. You know, she is a, a, you know what I would say, she's a type of a Jezebel spirit. Yeah, what? She's a type of that, uh, you know, of that uh, Semiramish and Ashtoreth and the Asherah. Hear what I'm saying to you? She's a stemtress. You see, and years and year after year, the concept of a woman and a child was incorporated in various religions. And they began to worship the woman and this child. And it was called the mystery religion of Babylon. And what happened when Genesis 11 had collapsed and Babylon was destroyed? If you've studied the migration of what took place, these were the said influences that traveled to the book of Revelation. There was a church that was called the Church of Pergamos. And this is where they established their roots. And could I tell you something about the Church of Pergamum? In the book of Revelation, it says that the spirits were so strong, the territorial rights of these spirits were so deeply ingrained and entrenched in Pergamos that the church could not have dislodged them. Such was the strength and the in-depth planting. It was irreversible, the containment of these spirits in Pergamum. So I'm trying to say this is the spirit that we have got to deal with when we speak of this church of Babylon. So the concept of this woman, my dear friends, and as Christianity came into contact with the Babylonian religion, it created abject turmoil. And through centuries, there has been a tendency for the church to be anchored in the world instead of God. Modern liberalism has caused us to further depart from the scriptures. So there is coming a day, my dear friends, and hear me carefully. There is coming a day, and we are just around the corner, that Babylon would merge with Romanism. And what is Romanism? The Catholic Church. And it is going to be the basis of the mystery church of Babylon, Babylon the great, the great prostitute, the great harlot. These are the, the other religions. And I tell you, if you look at what the antichrist system and policies are doing now, you know, if you don't agree with same sex marriages, they're gonna cut all ties with you. And I speaking, I'm speaking of the UN. I'm speaking of the, you know, there is something that is called the, the REM. Come on, understand me. 
there is something that we call the great reset that's coming. Well, one of the resets going to come, they're going to give you a memorandum. You got to agree with this, this, this or the other, or we're going to cut ties with you. Economically, you are just a little banana country. So you really can't contend with the forces of the, uh, 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 you know, of the economic powers of the world. So in essence, we are going to be blackmailed into conceding to the tyranny of the major economic powers of the world. This is the system that is coming. And this is the influence of the one world order that is yet to come. But here John is saying, when I saw her, I was greatly astonished. He says, my God, I saw the beast which you saw once was, now is not. And would come again. Now hear me. What is he saying? The beast that one was. The Antichrist has existed before. And he is not showing his face now. But soon he would. And he is yet to come out of the abyss. And go on his destruction. This is what he was thinking about. He was scratching his head my dear friends. But let's examine this woman. She is sitting on a beast with seven heads. And as I spoke last night, the body of a leopard and the feet of a bear. What is this woman and what is this symbolism and imagery depicting? It is this depicting everything in the book of, Reve of, of, of Daniel 7 and 7. Daniel's 2 and the book of Revelations, the 13th chapter that I ministered on last night. This is the compendium, the fulfillment, the aggregate, the calcification, the coming to pass of everything that Daniel spoke about, that everything that was spoken about in the book of Revelation. This is the beast. The woman who is sitting on that beast is the apostate church, and the beast is the Antichrist himself. And she's riding with him. And now the Bible says that she sits on many waters. But here is also the Bible calls for a mind of wisdom. You've got to have a mind of wisdom. Now, what is wisdom? Wisdom is a combination of knowledge, judgment, and experience. Could I say that, my dear friends? You need knowledge, judgment, and experience to be wise. Is that okay, my dear friends? I encourage you along those lines. And this is this woman. Let's look at the woman. He said she was sitting on a beast with seven heads. Now, what are the seven heads? There were seven empires. They included the Egyptian, the Assyrian, the Babylonian, the Middle Persian, the Grecian Empire. And the sixth empire was, in, was, the, was the former Roman Empire. You know what I'm telling you, my dear friends? In fact, that's the sixth empire. And the seventh empire will be the revived European Union. And the eighth empire is going to be the empire. The Antichrist. And she said she was sitting on the beast with seven heads. Africa. Asia. America. South America. Australia. Come on, understand me. Antarctica, Europe. She is sitting on many waters on every continent. Wherever you go, you would find her. And she has made drunk the leaders of the world, not with her wine, but with her blasphemous indoctrination, twisted ideologies, and flawed philosophies. She has corrupted the purity of the gospel. She has messed up the unbridled, undiluted morality of scriptural meritocracy and conduct. She has made it a free for all. You can do what you want. You got a one-way ticket to heaven. Just come along and ride with me. Seven heads, seven continents, seven empires. Let me ask you another question. Isn't there seven hills in Rome? 
Rome is known as the city of seven hills. The seven hills, Palatine, Aventine, Kaelin, Esquiline, Viminal, Curinal, Capitolone. What is God saying here? She sits on a city with has seven heads. And that seven heads embraces a spectrum of everything that you could possibly think about. This is the view that I would like you to have this evening, my dear friends. Here is a further statement that we must become a part of the apostate church. This is the woman. The angel declares that she got 10 horns. There are 10 kings. She has the world in her hands. This is the woman. She sits on many waters. This is the woman. And he saw she is a prostitute. And she has swayed just about everyone, the peoples, the multitudes, the nations, and the languages. She has indicated that she has promoted false religions. Come on. And that she has now become a political force and influence. But can I tell you, the Antichrist is only using her. When the Bible says to you, come out of her. Get to a church that preaches the word of God. That is governed by the spirit of God. Go, my dear friends, to a place where you could be renewed by the Spirit. Do not follow this woman. My dear brethren that I call the Catholic people, that you are so faithful to the things that you believe in. What a God, what, what a sincere people you are. But here I'm telling you, get out of that place. It is a place that the world and the devil is going to use to establish the apostate church, a one world religion that's going to bring havoc, damnation, destruction upon the world as never to come before. You've got to get out of there, my dear friends. I'm saying this to you. I don't want to be controversial. It's just the truth of God. There are vials that are about to hit the world, friends. Let me just share this with you. Let's check this out. You see, the judgment of Babylon the Great. You know, it, it's kind of it's kind of ugly, you know. Though, you know, but God knows best, okay? To call a church a harlot, to call that church a prostitute. You know, you, you know what I'm saying. We are too mixed up, my dear friends. The so-called professing church of Jesus Christ is mixed up and messed up. You know, God did not want a mule to plow the field together with an oxen. If you wore clothing, you could not have wear linen mixed with wool. You know, God is against mixture. And if you study the word of God, you're going to see things from a perspective that would really bring a balance to your life and my life. And who are the kings of this earth who have committed fornication with the woman? Who are the kings? Are they only the politicians or it's going to be the church that loves the world? And, the, and, and, and I hear what I'm telling you, the church that loves the world and the world that loves the church. Yeah, you know, some of the things I'm saying to you, man, I'm not supposed to be saying it. In today's world, that is politically correct. You know, can I tell you something? If you want to be politically correct, go ahead with your, your, your agenda, okay? But if to be politically correct is to be confronting biblical truths and doctrines and to be morally bankrupt, you keep your political correctness. I'm going to open my mouth and spare aloud. Come on, understand me. What is of God is of God. We can no longer compromise the things of God. As I said last night, hear what I'm saying to you again. If I got to get my neck cut off, I am sorry. I've only got one neck to give. Come on. You know, my very dear friend, our former president, Diana Robinson. Man, we came like father and son in the last 10 years of his life. He used to come hear me preach at Austin de Bourg's church, the um, Trinidad Christian Center. We became very good friends. 
And once we sat in his house in Ellerslie Park and we were laughing and talking. And we started to talk about the time the, in 1990 when there was the uprising and he was shot. So I said, man, your words are gonna go down in history as a gallant soldier. Because when they put a gun to his head and says, well, are you gonna ask your country to shut down and concede? Instead, you know what he said? My God, attack with all force. My goodness, attack with all force. I said, man, I wish some preachers could be that way. Come on, we have lost the fire and the authority of preaching. Can I tell you something? But what I really liked about what President A. N. R. Robinson told me, he said, and you know, David, I am sorry. I only had one kneecap for them to shoot off. They could have shot off all. And I wish I didn't have more to give them. That is a man. That is a man, my dear friends, of deep convictions. Okay? You see, the false church is going to fill the world with unbelief. He's going to encourage immorality. It, it's wine. What is the wine of the false church? It is not only natural alcohol, but it is corrupt theology, flawed philosophy, things that diametrically you know, opposes the integrity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know when the Bible says, not a jot or a fit should fail, not a word should fail. You know what is the cause of failure of humanity? Disobedience to one word. Let me take you back. God said unto Adam and Eve, come on, the day you eat of that tree, you should surely die. This is what Satan said to, to them. The day you eat of that tree, you shall not surely die. One word was twisted and taken out of context and it led to every problem that we have in the world today. You should surely die became you should not surely die. My goodness, be careful, Mr. Pope. You are contemplating writing a new Bible because you call our Bible incomplete and outdated and old fashioned. He has already put in place to write a Bible called Biblia 2000. And you mess with the word of God. I'm telling you, Mr. Pope, you better watch out, friend. You better get saved and baptized and speak in tongues. You ain't infallible. You are an imposter. And the word that is coming, get out of that place. Get out of that place of false doctrine and where the wine of this world corrupts. The woman that sits on the beast, what does it mean? That the church is hand and glove with the Antichrist. And there the false church, you see, is riding upon the political systems of everything that the beast controls. Here were 10 nations, then the entire world. Right now he's flirting with communism and the ride is on. Come on, the ride is on. And this chaotic world into which the Israelites have got to flee to escape the persecution of the beast, all of, the, all of the ornaments are in place. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet. What are the colors that the Pope wears on his mind? Check it out. Gold and precious stones. You know the Pope changed his name to Pope Francis because there was a great Catholic priest by the name of Francis of Assisi, and I might have said it last night, and he had gone to the Vatican and he saw the opulence and the wealth of that place. But when he had gone into the Catholic nations and countries and villages, he saw abject poverty. Yes, he died at the age of 44, but he lived a life like a Mahatma Gandhi. He identified himself with the poor and the destitute. Like a Mother Teresa, he became a humanitarian. 
And this Pope changed his name to Francis so that he could fool the people. Can I tell you something? And he's named after Francis of Assisi. You know, my dear friends, the things that you guys are gonna do to the world, you are simply driving the tenets of the Antichrist culture into existence. Now, but let, 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 let me just run this by you. Having a golden cup in her hand that was filled with the abominations and the filthiness of a fornication. What is in that golden cup that she offers to her companion that is filled with abomination? It is filled with things that are spiritually and morally corrupt. Things that are, my dear friends, pronouncements that are ungodly. The cup is golden, shows that her teaching is attractive, my dear friends, but in that cup, is filled with the blood of the saints that was martyred in the name of Jesus Christ. That is what the cup contains, the blood of the martyrs. This is why God says that I would deal with Babylon. No, he left them for last. Yes, my dear friends, hear the mystery, this woman partially made clear. She is known written Babylon the Great, mystery of Babylon. Come on, the mother of harlots and the abomination of this earth. You know, this identity, this mystery is well explained to us. Hear what I'm telling you, friends. This woman, the great harlot, or Babylon the Great, teaches us that the final apostate church of the world would be a world church system that has its roots way back in antiquity amongst the false religions, the false religions. And she is guilty of the blood of the martyred saint as well as the blood of the saints that is gonna be shed during the great tribulation. But God says, hear what? This is what God says, that I am gonna deal with this woman. And I saw the woman, she was drunk with the blood of saints, the martyrs of Jesus Christ. And when I saw her, I wondered with great tribulation. And the angel said unto me, wherefore did thou marvel? I would tell thee the mystery of this woman and of the beast that carrieth her unto the seven seas. The beast that thou sawest is not, hear what I'm telling you, he should ascend from the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth should wonder whose name were not written in the book of life from the foundations of the world, who they beheld the beast that was not and is and yet to come. And here in the mind of that wisdom, the seven heads are seven mountains upon which the woman sitteth. What is the seven mountains? I call you the names just a while ago. They are the seven mountains, the seven hills of Rome. And there are seven kings, five have fallen. Who are the seven kings? They are the five empires that existed before the Babylonian empire, the Ottoman empire, come on, the Middle Persian empire. Those are the empires that existed before, but there are two, there are still one, the Roman empire, yes, the foundation, they were destroyed, but the foundation is still there. And the empire to come, it's going to be the revived old Roman Empire, which is going to make up this seven empire. She is in every continent. The harlot. The city of Rome. The Caesars, the emperors, the councils and the popes. Time would tell my dear friends that the harlot sits in this city, clearly indicated that the Vatican is the capital of the false religious systems of the world today and the world to come. They don't want to say it like that no more. You know what's going to happen to this world, my dear friends. Let me tell you. Speaking about the ecclesiastical Babylon. When the Antichrist is finished, the woman is riding with him right now. But this is what he said. After I got what I want from her, I am going to smash that woman to pieces. 
She's going to be powdered and I'm going to take her clothes off and expose her nakedness and her falsity. You need to still honor among thieves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, my dear friends? Here, yeah, the Antichrist that has used this woman to get global control together with the technocrats and the, the media, the media mob, together with Hollywood, together with the secret societies and the secret orders and the resecutions and the Freemasons and the Bilderbergs, come on, and the Ashoka from India, come on. She's gonna use all of these things to get his culture into place. Everything now that has been entrenched in the world, Nancy Pelosi, Donald Trump attempted to drain the swamp. Now she has replugged the swamp and she's bringing in every corruptible thing that you could imagine. Hear what I'm saying to you this evening, my dear friends. If you share an opinion today that is different than the mob, they would come and kill you. They would send, you know, and, and, and you know, today the police is being disbanded. They, they don't want police no more. And you know, that president, that old man, that president of America, you know, he wants to lock up people for marching in the, in the White House who were disgusted with a stolen election, but he does nothing about the looting and the banditry and the billions of dollars that was ravaged on the streets of America. He looks the other way when it comes to anarchy. You know, Kamala, she wants to legalize prostitution at 12. You know, Hillary Clinton, the Roe v. Wade, legalize abortion. You could kill a baby even when it is born now if you don't like its face. That's true. If you don't like how the baby looks, take his life. Legalize global sponsorship of the, uh, of the uh, abysmal obliteration of unborn life. These are the things that we have in the world today, my dear friends. And these are the institutions that have been promoted. There's gonna be a time of the 10 heads. And this, they should make war with the lamb. And the lamb should overcome them. Now, let me share with you about this now. That is the ecclesiastical religious Babylon. I believe its headquarters would be in Rome, the Vatican, the city of seven hills the beast with seven heads, the seven continents, she's on many waters. But I believe that there is also a, you see, Babylon is an empire. It's gonna be the trading capital of the world where every luxury of the world, where the harp is gonna play its harp, it's gonna be a place of entertainment and riches. Every form of immorality is gonna take place there. Now, I've heard a lot of people say, no, do you think Dr. Comedy, do you think that the, this, uh, what I would say is this business Babylon, the commercial mercantile capital of the world, do you think it's gonna be New York or, or, or could it be uh, Dubai or, or maybe even Singapore or, or, or London? Well, where, it's going to be, a, it is said that, that Istanbul was one of the richest places. In the, is it going to be one of these places that we're going to call the economic business Babylon? You know, I could build, I, what am I personally believe? It's going to be more than one place. It's going to be a conglomerate of places that is going to comprise the mercantile business Babylon. New York has got all of the ornaments and all of the tenements of being that place. You see what happened, I spoke about it last night, at the top of the UN office, they put a statue that represents peace and safety for humanity. But guess what that statue was? It was an image of a lion. Come on, understand me, a lion head with two wings, the body of a leopard and the feet of a bear. What an insult it was to this word of God. 
Here the word of God, my dear friends, is telling us that that is an emblematic of, it's an imagery of the beast of the Antichrist. And now these people have put an image of the Antichrist that represents peace and safety. But you can't do that to, to, to Muhammad. The Muslim people would rise up and tear you to pieces. Not the godless, spineless Christianity who has got no convictions. Come on. You just want to stay in the doors of the church. That is not Christian. Go into the highways and byways, my dear friends. If you had said something erroneous or negative about Muslim, about, about Muhammad, you see what they did in Belgium. They marched and they burned down and they killed people, understand me, by so many. You can't say that to other religions. But here are the Christians. The UN has put an image of the beast and the Passive, spineless, gutless, yellow belly Christianity that lacks convictions, that lacks testicular fortitude, that lacks determination. Where is that imperishable resolve to stand up for truth? Come on. I'm telling you that John the Baptist anointing is going to come back to the world, Professor. Sister Nicole, it is coming back. When Jesus came to the world, the forerunner of his entrance into the world, his first appearance was the anointing of John the Baptist. When he comes back the second time in the millennium, that same anointing of John the Baptist is going to be upon the two witnesses, Enoch and Elijah, and the 144,000 Jewish evangelists that's going to be raised up. Come on. They're not going to say good morning, friends, and thank you, brethren. They're going to start their sermons, and if you and live right, you're going to die. That rock of, of defense is going to be a rock of offense. It's going to save you. It's going to crush you. Come on. That is the kind of preaching that's coming back to the church. Is that okay to say that? Comfortable Christians. And thank God to the Christians that are fired up. Fiery. Come on, understand me. Come on, Kim Young. you got to fire up them boys, man. From the class of 66. Kim and I were in the same class at Astro Boys College in 66. You gotta get them fellas, come on. We call them the fraternity of 1966 and let them know that there is a real world out there that we are on the precipice of falling into the end times where the greatest horror and the atrocities that the world has ever seen is gonna be unleashed upon humanity. And we got to dance now to another song. It's a song of urgency. But that is the outcome of the woman that sits on the beast. It's the apostate church that rides with the beast, the antichrist and his empire. She's gonna be used by the beast to charm all of the nations of the world. And they're gonna dangle a carrot, it's called religion. And the second part of the religion, she's going to make deals. Come on, understand me with all of the nations. Yes, we're going to work with you. Yes, we're going to help you with food distribution because food is not going to be able to regrow itself again. As I said last night, Monsanto is, is ge genetically engineering food so that it does not regrow. So you've got to come to the Antichrist for your food and your medicine. Well, she's the one that's going to be laying out the plan together with the technocrats and the mass media tyrannies. Them tyrannists are the ones that dangle these things before you. You know, I am a world director of, I tell you, it's called Certified Christian Counselors of Canada. It's a counseling university. And recently we were told by the government that if someone comes to you for counseling, are you going to tell them about, but, but only about the Bible? Are you going to tell them that they don't have the rights to customize their are you, you hear the nice words they use? Customize your gender. Hey, or reassign your gender. 
If God made you a man, you better stay a man. If God made you a woman, that's who you are. You know, in the Bible, in the world today, Professor, there are 63 genders. I got it in my book, Exposing the Enemy. If you need a copy of that book, no, I, I'm going to give you my number, okay? You could write it down. You could call and you'll get a copy of the book, okay? It's my number, it's 647 862 4696. That's my number. You could call me, okay? We are friends, we are family. If you are a friend of the professor, you are a friend of mine. Okay, Sister Nicole, isn't that the way it is? Well, in that book, I have a chapter on the 63 genders in the world today. And do you know out of that 63 genders, if you should look at an algorithm or the permutations and the combinations out of that 63 genders, the world could have 4,000 genders one day. And God made two. Ah, ah, welcome to this woman who rides upon the beast. Did you hear what the Pope is saying lately? We should not judge love. Man. Well, let me share a bit now because, you know, Professor, time is running out, okay? Let me just share a bit about this Babylon. See, Babylon was built in a place called Shinar in Iraq. It's about 60 miles south of Baghdad. Okay? That's Babylon. Now, Babylon, as you and I know, was destroyed. But now the Bible says, and you know, there is only a certain amount that you and I could spiritualize, okay? There are certain things in the Bible, it has got to be read literally. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be read and interpreted literally. You know, sometimes I'm guilty of that because my students will tell me, you know, Dr. Comedy, you spiritualize everything that you read. And I don't know if I do it right or if I'm just, just my mind is to what I would say, extreme. So let's check this out. It says Babylon is going to rise again. Does it only speak of the mentality? You see, the word Babylon means opposition to God. Okay, that is Babylon. Anything that opposes Babylon. Look at the Jamaican folks. They would call Babylon the advantage of the police. <laughs> you know, what, what they consider the abuse that is, it, it comes to them at the hands of the law. So it's a terminology of opposition to humanity. That's their terminology of Babylon. And I got a lot of, a lot of Jamaican brethren in Toronto. Hear what? But here we say in Babylon, Babylon is going to be rebuilt. Just to let you know, the head office of the European Union is about to be rebuilt and completed, and it's going to be rebuilt in France. And guess what? That building would be rebuilt as a duplicate of the former Tower of Babylon. Christians, when you see these mockery, don't you feel offended? Brothers and sisters, when you see these kind of mockery, ah, put a statue for the Christians. Hey, Christians! Your statue for peace and safety is the beast. Or, or Christians of the European Union, the revived empire, we are going to make a head office in France. And just to rub it in your face, it's going to be the former tower of Babel, confusion. The devices of a sense, human, and flesh consciousness. It's what man wants to produce. Hey, Babylon, Babel is going to be rebuilt again. And it's going to be rebuilt right where it was, the same location. Let me tell you something. The Bible says that Babylon would be destroyed in one hour. Hey, 
This is speaking of a nuclear detonation. Babylon is going to be destroyed in one hour. You see, that is going to be a center of the beast and the, the, this, this Babylon the Great. This false church, this antichrist spirit, this antichrist personality, this empire of evil from which the antichrist is going to run the world and humanity for three and a half years prior to Jesus coming back and crushing him to pieces. You see, we may lose a battle now and then, but we're going to win this war. Know this, Christians. You might have to give up your neck, but we're going to win the war. You know, they discovered, Professor, that Babylon is going to be, re be rebuilt, that city, and it's going to be a great commercial capital of the world where everything you could imagine would be. You could have just about anything that you want. It's going to be rebuilt in the last three and a half years. For the last three and a half years of the 1260 days of the Antichrist domination and butchering of the world. But hear what God says. Is it going to be a nuclear detonation? Is it going to be some explosion that takes place? What's going to cause that place to be destroyed in one hour? Check your Bible out, okay? You know, recently a satellite from way up in the firmament had come over and did a geographical soil study of where Babel is going to be rebuilt. And they found out it is under one of the most flammable lakes of asphalt that you could imagine. Christians, you should rejoice. And I believe that's all it's going to take is a couple buster bunkers bomb, like nuclear bombs, to be shot into the earth in that region. And that lake of oil and flammable material is going to explode and Babylon shall be no more. Babel should rise no more. Because God has got a plan for that place. See it again, friends? The political Babylon, I believe it's going to be administered through the Vatican. Yes, he's going to take control of the temple. Israel is going to cut a deal with him. But when he attempts to remove the Ark of the Covenant from the Holy of Holies, they're going to recognize that he's an imposter. And this woman who has drunk the blood of saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus Christ. Hear what I'm telling you, my dear friends. There is coming a day that the said Antichrist that she rides with now is going to turn viciously upon her. And he says he's going to destroy her, bring her naked in shame throughout the world. And the end of that harlot system would be greater and worse than it ever was. Now, let's check another thing before I get over with my commentary tonight. We need the mind of the spirit to comprehend certain things. Rome is the eternal city of seven hills. Okay, Rome is the city of seven hills. It is a place of the Caesars, the emperors, the councils, and the popes. That harlot that sits on that city simply is the one who creates all of the false religious receptacles and sways the world into her mentality. Let's look at this. These are the 10 kings. The Bible says the horns, the crowns, and the glory of an animal is its defensive weapon. In Revelation 17 and 12, and the 10 horns with those saw it are 10 kings who have received no kingdom as yet, 
but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. And selected men, and they would have one mind and give their power and strength to the beast. It's going to be confederacy of the revived Roman Empire. And they would be enslaved to the Antichrist. My dear friends, in the book of Daniel 8 and 8, it speaks of the great horn. When, the, when Daniel spoke of the great horn, what did he speak of? It represented Alexander the Great. And the little horn in Daniel 8 and 9, although some theologians have said it represented Antiochus Epiphanes, who was a Syrian monarch. No, my dear friends, I believe it represents the beast. The little horn with fierce eyes is going to be the Antichrist. And they said that he has got three bones in his mouth. Those are the three bones, the three little nations that he's going to crush. I believe it's going to be Ethiopia, Libya, and I don't know if it's going to be Egypt, but it's going to be a major country, one of the three. And it's going to cause the rest to fall into fear of him. And these 10 anti kings they would give complete allegiance to the bees. Is it only the European common market? As I close off this evening, the judgment of that great harlot, the mystery church of Babylon, the judgment of Babylon's end capital city. And after this, he says, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, chapters 18 and 2. Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen as it become the habitation of devils and hold every false spirit and a cage for every unclean and hateful bird or demon. For all nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of a fornication and the kings of the earth had committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich to the abundance of their delicacies, my dear friends. The merchants of the earth have become rich. They have drunk a wine, come on. But it is all gonna come to an end because God says that the end of Babylon, the wicked system that has lived in splendor and has lived in beauty and have lived in abundance, that system is about to become a place of graffiti, come on. It's gonna be a place that collapses and turns into an awful curse, never to rise no more. The beast, the harlot woman is gonna be destroyed. Babylon is gonna be destroyed. The economic commercial, it's gonna be destroyed. Yes, it's gonna be rebuilt, but it's gonna be destroyed. The revived Roman empire is gonna be destroyed. The political commercial Babylon is gonna be destroyed because Jesus Christ is supreme and he's gonna reign and he's going to reign forevermore. Come on, say amen with me this evening if you're agreeing with what I say. Amen. So my dear friends this evening, it was a pleasure being with you. Could you just lift your hands to God with me this evening, my dear friends? And you know, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. Whatever you do, don't miss the rapture. You know, I had so many people calling me and texting me today. Dr. Kamini, what do you mean that the Holy Spirit is going to be lifted at the rapture? Yes, it is. The Bible says, and the Holy Spirit is going to take a break from the earth. So hear what the Bible says. Hear what the Bible says. A man cannot come to God unless he is wooed by the Holy Spirit. He's encouraged. You know, the Spirit of God does a work on the inside of that man. That is the only way he could come to God. So if the Holy Spirit is not there, how is he going to come to God? Through his beheading? Make sure. Make sure, friends. Make sure that when the first ride comes down, and remember again, let's clear up some theology. Jesus Christ is not coming to earth. The Bible says we would see him in the clouds. We would see him in the clouds. He ain't going to come back to this filthy earth and put his foot down here. Okay, not as yet. He's going to come back when that in the millennium, when Armageddon 
is done and certain grants are put back in place and all of the lands of Israel is given back to them. Come on, understand me. And there is peace in Jerusalem. That is when he comes back. So whatever you do tonight, make sure that when that trumpet sounds, you're going to be on that first ride. Now, I could say this to you, but I believe that the first rapture, the rapture in the book of Thessalonians, is going to be more Gentiles than Jews on that rapture. Because the Jews are still arguing about receiving Christ. They're still veiled and blinded and dumb and foolish. They don't, they, 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 don't, they don't see Christ as the Messiah as yet. But there's coming a day they would. And you better love God's people. The Bible says, I bless them that bless them, curse them that curse them. Come on. One way of ensuring that you're going to be blessed is to bless the Jew. I'm a Jewish commentator, a Jewish educator, a Jewish typology, history, a culture. I'm an expositor, a revelator of that kind of thing. I believe that the first rapture is going to be more Gentiles than Jews. And make sure that you are on this boat and this ride that comes out of the earth. If you're not sure about your place this evening, just slip your hands to God with me. Just slip your hands to God with me and say with me, Father, tonight I pray the mighty God that you would release upon my life a grace, a grace, Father, of endurance, a grace, mighty God, of patience, a grace, dear God, of power to live right. I imbue and I receive, I inculcate and I invite the Holy Spirit to take absolute total control of my life. Let him occupy the highest places in my mind. I pray there, God, that he's going to govern my spirit. Give me the ability to live right, mighty God. Release more power into me, Father, that I could shun the vanities and the attractions and the inducements of the world. Give me a power to live right, Father. I understand the eternal consequences as to what awaits man. And tonight, mighty God, I repent. I confess of any errors or inconsistencies, abnormalities, peculiarities, or frailties that might have held me back in the past. But I commit my life to you once again. I submit my life to you once again. Father, take over on the inside. And I declare this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'd like to say hello this evening to Nico, to my good friend Esther, to the, to the Augustines. I want to say goodbye, you know, to, the, to my friends. They got in from the Ukraine and from Bulgaria. I trust that you might have gotten in. And for all of you who supported the, the services, the last three sir, it was a pleasure ministering to you, my dear friends. And may God bless you as I turn it back to my dear brother, Dr. Noel Richards. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Carmody. Thank you for, you know, for sharing so much with us.